Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. Let's get started. Today we are looking at the musculoskeletal system, and this is part of our lecture series on nursing fundamentals. Let's begin with an anatomy and physiology review. The musculoskeletal system consists of muscles and bones. It also includes ligaments and tendons, which hold the muscles to the bones and secure our joints. Skeletal muscles are generally involved in voluntarily activity and exists around areas of the bones that we are able to move. Smooth muscle, conversely, are controlled involuntarily and exists in areas such as inside our organs. And another example would be the diaphragm, the muscle that we use to breathe. Bones have a bony matrix that rely heavily on calcium and bones are also significant in that they are the site of blood cell production. Let's begin with an assessment of the musculoskeletal system. Range of motion is used for two purposes. One is to assess a patient's flexibility, and the other is as an exercise to prevent loss of range of motion. If a patient is immobile for a long period of time, they will lose their flexibility, their ability to move all of their bones through all of the different ranges of motion. We may sometimes do this, us or physical therapy, to help a patient prevent losing their flexibility or their range of motion. Active range of motion is where from head to toe, the patient moves every single muscle in their body, every single joint in their body. They're going to flex and extend. They're going to do abduction and adduction, and they're going to do lateral rotation. Passive range of motion is the same as active, except we are doing it for the patient while they do not participate. Let's talk about immobility. Immobility is where a patient is not mobile, and there could be many, many reasons for this. A patient could just be not feeling well and staying in bed all day. A patient could be pregnant and on bed rest. A patient could be post-operative and unable to move due to surgical issues that are going on. There are many reasons why a patient may be immobile. Immobility has a negative effect on virtually every system in our body. And we've highlighted here a few key points. In terms of the musculoskeletal system, the patient is likely to get contractures, which is a shortening and hardening of the joints. And this comes from a lack of movement. Renal calculi or kidney stones, as well as osteoporosis, and both of these come from calcium leaving the bones, and therefore osteoporosis is from a lack of calcium in the bones, and kidney stones is from an increase of calcium in other areas. Pulmonary atelectasis and pneumonia comes from when the patient is just in one position for an extended period of time, there's secretions that pool in one area of the lungs. And when that happens, it can cause damage to the lungs and it can cause a, be a breeding ground for infection. DVT or deep vein thrombosis is a blood clot. And this comes from poor blood circulation. Our body relies upon mobility, upon activity for the circulation of blood. Yes, we have our heart that pumps blood, However, mobility and activity are also significant components of what moves blood throughout our body. If a patient is immobile, the heart must compensate for that because activity was being used to help move blood and that activity is no more. Therefore, the patient must now increase their blood pressure in order to meet that demand. So a patient that is immobile would have a higher blood pressure and because they wouldn't have as good circulation, they would be at risk for things like a DVT. Pressure ulcers are discussed elsewhere in the integumentary section, but one of the key risk factors, if not the key risk factor, is immobility. This is from increased pressure at the site causing decreased circulation at the site. If there's constant pressure there, then the blood vessels and other areas are getting are having pressure and they're not having as good of circulation. UTI or urinary tract infection 
comes from urine flow stagnation. Again, if the urine is just sitting there, if it's not moving, it becomes a breeding ground for infection. And finally, constipation. Our body relies on activity to help move our contents through the bowels. If we are immobile, if we are not active, then we would have a slowdown in this movement through the bowels and that would cause constipation. Next, we're going to discuss patient positioning and you may have learned most of these already in medical terminology. Lateral recumbent is where the patient is placed on one side, it could be either the right or left lateral recumbent. Fowlers or semi-fowlers is the sitting position or semi-sitting position. Lithotomy position is the one you are most likely familiar with in relation to GI or OB, where the patient is laying on their back with their legs up in the air in stirrups. Head of bed elevated is another position that may be specified, such as when a patient is on a ventilator in the ICU, and it would specify a specific numbers of degrees, such as have the head of bed elevated 30 degrees. Supine is where a patient is face up, and prone is where a patient is found face down. Please note, this does not literally need to be face down as in their nose is on the floor. It means that their chest and their torso is face down on the floor. Trendelenburg is where a patient's legs are elevated and it's used to increase blood flow to the upper half of the body. Reverse Trendelenburg is the opposite where the head of the bed is elevated and the feet are lowered Next, we have various diseases, and we will discuss these all in much more depth when we get to med surge. However, let's at least introduce ourselves to them. Arthritis is a known issue with musculoskeletal, and there's three types of arthritis, gout or gouty arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and osteoarthritis. Of these, osteoarthritis is the most common. Osteoporosis is another disease of the musculoskeletal system that we already mentioned, comes from a lack of calcium in the bones. Tendinitis is inflammation of the tendons, and this can be caused by a number of different factors. Fractures and other trauma are among the most common issues that we have with our musculoskeletal system. And finally, tumors or other cancers. The last portion to talk about is more guided towards the healthcare provider, and this is ergonomics. Ergonomics is the design of work that is best in a way that is best suited for the person performing it. This is a key issue in nursing safety to make sure that we as healthcare providers stay safe in providing care to our patients. The CDC published four primary principles for lifting patients. Maintain a wide, stable base with your feet. Put the bed at the correct height. When you're providing care, you should bring the bed up to waist level. It should be at hip level when moving a patient. Please recall, you must always lower the patient's bed prior to departing from the patient's bedside. Try to keep the, the work directly in front of you to avoid constantly rotating your spine and keep the patient as close to your body as possible for lifting. Thank you for watching. Here are your references. Have a great day.